What's going on YouTube family? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight with some more lake breakdowns. This time we're going out west and we're talking about Lake Brownwood. I had a special request for this lake, so figured I'd give it a whirl tonight, see what we can find. We're going to use Google Earth tonight for this video. It's probably going to take us a couple videos to get this one done just on the Google Earth side. Then we'll switch over to the offshore spots. Stick around. I got some good stuff for you. All right, just like we do in all of our lake breakdown videos, first thing we like to do is come out here to the Texas Park and Wildlife page and just get some information about the lake. You know, what are the current water levels? Uh, where are some general things to uh, to find in the lake? And really, where where is the location of the lake? So when we're looking at this right here, basically we're looking at Lake Brownwood. The location is on the Pecan Bayou and Jim Ned Creek. It says 70 miles southeast of Abilene and about 10 miles north of Brownwood. Uh, you can see that the lake is not huge, uh, 6,490 acres, but still pretty decent size. You got a maximum depth of 95 feet and it was impounded a long time ago, 1933. So when we look here, let's just go and look at the current lake level. We've got the conservation pool is 1,425 feet. Let's click on the current lake level here and see what it gives us. And you can see here, it doesn't look like it's really fluctuated too much. Uh, 1,425, so it's really not that bad today. It's 90% full, so uh, pretty good. You know, not too bad at all. I think there's probably a way to tell if it's lower when I'm looking at this one99 nine nine feet below pool so just about two foot below pool which is really kind of where all of our lakes are and they typically are about this time of year in the february time frame so let's go ahead and switch back uh, to the texas park and wildlife page and let's keep going uh, as far as water clarity for this one it's clear to stained and then predominant fish species largemouth bass white bass crappie channel and flathead catfish and then of course we always like to look at the lake records and see what they'll tell us so let's go here to largemouth 13.5 september 12th to 2020 actually a pretty recent one a zoom trick worm that's interesting i wonder if that was caught on a shaky head or how that was uh, rigged up but anyways very good good sized bass for sure definitely one that i would love to uh, to take uh, a picture with so 1358 that's pretty cool lots of good sized fish coming out of this lake let's keep going we'll keep moving over of course these west texas lakes man they pump out some huge fish i just saw a post recently on the social media where uh, a guy just set a a new record for a 17 pound bass that was caught out of ivy so they just keep coming and this live scope is really uh making those fish a lot more vulnerable than they've ever been before so let's keep moving on down here let's talk about it uh contour maps of course we're going to go over that we'll do a uh, a lake breakdown video for just the offshore hotspots for this lake tonight we're going to focus on the google earth side so we'll skip over that and let's just look here about the angling opportunities it says large north bass is good catfish is good and white bass is excellent uh, and you kind of get some other things back in here that talk to you about it cool thing about this lake is they do have fish attractors so what they'll do is they'll put these fish attractors in the lakes here in texas to attract all kinds of different kind of fish fish species. A lot of times they're crappie condos. They're really there to attract the crappie. But if you've watched any of my lake breakdown videos before, sometimes those can be massive magnets for the bass to come in there and eat on the crappie. And those are great places to find pretty much all species of fish. So cool thing about this is they do give you a downloadable file. And we'll talk about that when we switch over to Google Earth. So that's really about everything they offered us on the Texas Park and Wildlife page. Let's jump over to Google Earth. And let's see what we can find over there. All right, so let's jump into the Google Earth side for Lake Brownwood. I've been having all kinds of problems trying to make this video because for some reason, the Google Earth image is not really wanting to work with me. So uh, let me go ahead and jump over and just show you where we're at right now. So as far as the left-hand side, you can see over here, I've got this broken down into a couple different categories. You've got the Texas Park and Wildlife fish attractors that you're going to see out here. These are all the different green trees. We've got offshore hotspots. You won't see those when I click that unless I take it to 2021, which I don't want to do because for whatever reason, Google Earth is acting kind of funky with me. But trust me, they're out there uh, and you will see them on the card. And we'll actually talk about them later as well. And then we're going to talk about all the different rocks, so different kind of rocks formations, big boulders, ledges, rocky points, stuff like that, just all kinds of high percentage areas around those rocks. We'll also go in and we'll talk about the different channels that we found throughout the lake. Those are all these different tracks that you can see in here. 
And then different types of cover, whether that be laydowns, brush piles, uh, all kinds of different stuff that we found, debris, things like that. And then last but not least, you've heard me talk about it a lot, and I'll continue to talk about it because it's a great pattern to run at certain times of the year, and that is going to be your boat ramps. So all the different boat ramps that you can find out there on the lake, those are all going to be labeled as well. You can see that here if I unselect these. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing, and let's talk about what we found. So uh, first off, I'm going to select everything on the lake except for the offshore stuff. I'm going to take the offshore stuff off. And then normally what I would do is I would take you up to this little history thing up here at the top historical imagery and we would keep drawing it back until we saw the lake go down but for whatever reason when i take it to 2021 and then i try to get back to where i was it's acting all crazy so i'm going to leave this where i have it because it's right where i wanted and that's going to be june of 13. And what we're going to do is we're going to start over here by what i assume is the dam uh, we're going to start right here and then we're going to work our way east and north and then we're coming back down on the west side so starting over here obviously you've got your riprap along the dam really that little drainage area along the dam right in there is probably gonna be more the high percentage area of that that spot that in the corners but then you've also got a ramp that's over here you've got some pretty good rock formations going on out here off the edge of this point so pretty much you have rock that starts from right here and it's going to take you all the way over pretty much about right in here and then it kind of starts changed a little bit so really all those docks right in that area that's all going to be pretty good stuff to be able to fish around you're going to have plenty of stuff to bang crankbaits around and stuff like that now when we get over here where this little flat is it looks like when the water's up the water actually comes up here maybe and actually cover this road or at least in this image it did but you do have a nice little ditch that's back in here you see these little ditches they don't look like much to the eye but fish love to set up in those little ditches especially like if it's if it gets really cold to so say maybe it's been it's been warm then all of a sudden it gets really cold but they've already moved up those are the little things that they'll relate to you so you definitely want to look at those there's also a pretty good little rock pile that's kind of collected right around this ridge this uh not ridge but this ditch so take a look right there where i've marked that rock at you've also got some additional rock that's over here that kind of sticks out a little bit different kind of rock than everything else more like little boulders you can kind of see them down here so i could see this being a pretty good area to try to find some fish also moving up here you've got these little two isolated boulders you can see those right here looks like you might have one right there too but definitely these two right here and again if the water's up that's going to look a lot different that those boulders are going to be completely uh, covered up with water you're not going to know that they're there then going around of course this lake has tons of different rocks so if you think you know why would he mark rock well when i mark rock i mean it's like something special about that area or something special about that particular waypoint that i put there and you'll see that same thing here of course you've got the rock around the point that's a main lake point so you definitely would want to fish around there and i'm sure we'll talk about that when we get to the offshore stuff uh, but as we move further up the bank line here, these are the different rock formations that I was talking about. These big boulders that stick out, they give you some, some shade or they give the fish some shade, some things to hide behind. These are always great little formation, rock type formations to fish around. So you've got one right there, you've got another one right here, and then you've got another one that's up here. And again, let's go ahead and just pull the lake up. Let's see if we can do it. If we pull it up to 2019, you're not going to know that that's there. But that's, so that's going to be a really good one because it's totally submerged, but it's not so submerged that you can't, you know, fish around it. So real good spot right there. You've also got another one of those little isolated rocks that's over here on this side. We're coming in here, it looks like to Buzzard Bay. So if you get back in here, it's kind of a do-nothing type bank line, but there is some good stuff back in here. Right in here, you've got a really good rock pile coming off this little secondary point. I could see them setting up here, especially if they were going to go back here and spawn. That would be a really good stopping spot for them to uh, to hang out. So you definitely want to check that out. You've also got a Texas Park and Wildlife fish attractor that's right there in the middle of that cove. So you would always want to go back there, scan around those, fish around those. If you're crappie fishermen, those are definite hot spots for you. Uh, as we move further up here, again, we're looking at some just some isolated rock, little isolated chunk rock right out here, maybe a little boulder. There's another one that's right here, just these little piles. Then of course you have these isolated ones. You have one right here. You have another pretty decent one right there too, and then one right there. And then you've also got this rock that kind of comes off. So all this stuff right in here, this looks good. I've also marked it up in here as well. Just really hit the isolated stuff, you know, focus on just that area or just this area or just here. 
instead of beating that entire bank line. As we move further down, just more of that rock, you know, isolated rock, real big, chunky type flat rock, um, all kinds of good stuff. These are just the formations that come out that stick out further than everything else. Those are the ones that I mark for you guys. As we move up here, the land definitely changes. We go from all that rock to the really, this is like dry, nothing, hard, hard pan. So there's really nothing around there, around that point that really got my attention. You do have a Texas Park and Wildlife Fish Attractor that's over here by this little island. I'm sure we've probably got some type of offshore thing going on around this island once we dive into it from the offshore spot. Um, right in here, uh, not sure what we have a line there for, so not sure what that is. Let's go ahead and delete that puppy. Oh, it says that there's a rock wall there. Interesting. Let's go back up and see why it thinks that there's a rock wall there. And there it is. If we draw, draw it back far enough, we could actually see that there is something there. So where I had that line where it said there was a rock wall, there is an actual rock wall right there. It starts right here. You can see the top of it. And then it moves up and you can see it where it just comes off the edge of this point. It's pretty long. I'm sure it probably even goes further out in here, but you definitely want to uh, want to take a look at that one for sure. Let's go back and look at that line. I don't think I could see it as well because that line's right on top of it, but I'm going to change the uh, the color of that line so it looks a little bit better. But that, that wall is really right there, and that's going to be a real good spot right off the edge of that big flat that's coming off there. I can see that definitely being a good spot to check out. All right, as we move further back here, we've just got a little creek channel that goes back here. We've also got some additional rock that's over here at this point. Just kind of some isolated stuff. Just you can tell here it's just a little bit chunkier than everything else. Just a little bit, bit bigger than everything else uh, that we have out there. And then as we move further back here, we've got really two creek channels that come up. We've got one that's way up here that kind of circles in up here. You know, you're gonna if you're fishing those creek channels, you're gonna want to look at the turns, right? Anywhere it turns, right there, right here, maybe even all right in here. Anywhere it comes up close to the bank. So right in there along that. That dock in that area is going to be good. That point's going to be good. Um, and then again, you got another good swing going on right here and also right there. Good, good little bend there and a good swing, swinging right up against it there. So now if we pull up the water, 2019, you're not going to know that, right? It's not going to be as obvious if you're back there in the boat. But trust me that it's there. And it's definitely going to be a good spot for you guys to, uh, to fish around and try to see what you can find. So I'm going to take that back to 2013 so we can get back to where we were. And let's keep going. Let's probably do about five more minutes or so, and then we'll cut this one off, and we'll come back to Brownwood, and we'll keep doing this until we get to the offshore stuff, and then we'll circle back on that as well. So we talked about the rock that was there. Again, just some more rock, just different types of things here. This is a great big boulder. You can't tell because that icon's sitting on top of it. You've also got that rock, kind of a rock wall, again, looking right here. So that, that could go further out. That might actually go you know, way out here. So check it out, follow that from right there and see if that's another one of those walls that we were looking at it was on this other side. Maybe it goes up here and then comes back down this way. Maybe it was like an old hog pen or something like that that was made and they made their fence out of the, the rock walls. Not sure there, but there's definitely something interesting going on in that area. Let me see if I can pull it back, see if we can look at it a little bit closer. Yeah, you can definitely see it there. For sure. So now I'm intrigued by this interesting wall that's out here. So I'm thinking it turns right there. So that wall probably comes across the lake over here as well, but I don't see it connecting in here. So just would be interesting to see what happens to it. It looks like it starts there. Something's going on there and it's, it hides up there again, but that's going to be a really great piece of, of cover to, to fish around. So just make sure to go out and find that and really fish around it. All right. So I'm going to keep, keep moving on. This image is a little bit brighter, so it's hard to tell. So what I like to do is move that back to 2013. And now we can see that there's some isolated bigger boulders here. There's another big boulder there to look at as well. You've got some bigger boulders in here. And really, you could fish this entire bank line. I mean, it all looks good. You've got all kinds of good rock going on right off the edge of that point. Those docks have really good rock as well. And then you actually hit a spot back here where it completely changes. Like the rock formations and everything change. You go from 
kind of this to this little point that comes out and the rock kind of just, I don't know, it's a different kind of rock. So a real good transition spot right there in that area where I put that little transition icon. Now, as we move further back here, another ramp. Of course, this one's not even in the water at this time uh, back in 2013, but a pretty good little community ramp to fish there. I, I would imagine that one probably doesn't get that much activity. You've also got another ramp that's hidden over here as well. And then you've got some interesting just like house formations and things like that. These could be old foundations, but you've got one right here. It looks really similar to that wall that we saw earlier. So you've got this rock that's really amongst a bunch of nothing, but some really good rock there. You've also got right here a little foundation that I've marked out for you. You got another one right in here. Let's see if we can change the color of those things because they're really hard to see. So we're going to change the color of them to probably red, I'm thinking. It's probably going to be the best color so we can actually see what in the world is going on. And then we're going to pump that thing up to three. And that is going to make those things a lot bigger. So now let's go back up where we were. There's that rock wall. Going to be a lot more obvious. And here, is those, here are those foundations. Now, I didn't mark this one because I couldn't really tell. You know, that one, it, I mean, it does have rock there. So probably should have marked it. In fact, I might just mark it anyways. But I really liked these because these actually had like real, it was real obvious. There was a lot of rock and brick and stuff like that around here. So an old foundation here, maybe like an old well or something going on in that area. Here you've got that big pin again as well. Maybe like an old horse pin or something. If you look really closely inside of that, you got another little scattered pile that's right in here too. So just that area right in there looks really good. And you've also got some standing timber and stuff like that. You can see them kind of poking up in here. So if you're out here fishing, I would definitely go and look right around in this area and see what you can find. From an offshore standpoint, that looks like a really cool place to, uh, to be checking out. All right, so I'm going to keep moving up. We've got some more rock in here in that area. And we talked about, of course, I don't even know if I'd mess with that rock right there. I would probably just focus on these things uh, because they really do do look good to be able to fish around. Let's go ahead and fish on up. We're going to go up to this next one and then we'll probably call it quits there actually we'll go up to the creek and we'll call it quits there so we covered about half the lake here on this video it says we're moving over here some more rock just to check out again uh you know nothing special but if you look it's just a little bit chunkier type rock where the rest of the bank is just kind of that sandy stuff but you get in here and you get into a little bit rougher looking rock it kind of happens from there to there you've also got a fish attractor site that's out here as well a little boulder that comes out there that you could fish around as we move further up the lake, just a couple different rock type things. This is a nice little rocky point. So if you look at this, it's got a nice flat top on it. Pretty good looking point. If we draw that lake up, you, know, you don't even know that that's there right beside the dock. So I could see that having some potential for sure. Uh, also over in here, you've got some pretty good rocks coming off of this point. That has some good potential to set up on. Those two spots just look like two of those spots where you could just set up on them for hours and just bring fish off of them. So I would definitely go look at those. And then let's uh, let's look and see what this is. This is another one of those rock walls that are out there. You can kind of see it behind my mark here. I don't know if it's going to let me do the properties on my mark, but let's take that back to where we were. There you go. You can kind of see it there. There you go. Now it's really obvious. In fact... There's a couple more things here that I didn't catch before. I don't know what these are, but these could be little isolated rock piles as well, little humps that are out there. So check those two out. And then when you're looking at this whole rock fence, wall, whatever it is, there's another foundation that's right here as well that you could check out too. So that area right there, right around where that, that red line is going to be or where that track is, you definitely want to be fishing around there. And again, you've got some flooded timber that's not too far away as well. And then as we get back up in here, let's go ahead and finish this side. We've got a boat ramp up here, some additional rock going on right around the uh, the boat dock right in there. This little flat back in here looks good, but I just don't see anything that I can mark for you guys to, uh, to put back there. There's another one of those foundations that I did not mark that I should. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it right now. So there's another foundation that's out there. So we'll go in here. We'll call it foundation. Change the style to red. 
and we'll make that 3.0. Now we got a now we got it marked so we can go out there and check it out. And then we come up here again, we've got the rock by those docks, some more rock over there, nothing too special. A couple ramps and then just some isolated rock that was back in here. Like if you look at this one, it's like really chunky and it almost makes a shadow. You can almost see the shadow in it. That has some potential because right, you know, the lake's up. That's what it's going to look like there. You know that that ledge is a little bit further off. You got a little vegetation and stuff out there. I really like that. I really like that spot. And there's actually another one hidden up there. I didn't see it when the water was down, but it's right there too. Both those spots look really good. Of course, you could get up here and have some fun times up there frogging and stuff like that. And then over here, uh, just got some rock that's kind of hidden back in here. If I pull down the lake, you'll see just some additional rock. This all looks really shallow up in here. It's so probably not too much fishing you're going to do up in here other than shallow type fishing but you also have a brush pilot out here too so check out the brush that we put out there and then here is your main creek channel or river channel that really starts up there and i've kind of marked it for you guys so you can see where it's at you'll want to pay real close attention to those river channels especially when they come close to the land like right here this is going to be a good point to fish around these docks are going to be good places to fish around that ledge and stuff like that and then of course all these bends and turns you definitely want to scan around those and see if they're setting up on one of those. So that's going to finish us up for Lake Brownwood as far as the Google Earth video tonight. I'm going to come back again as a follow-up video. We'll start right there where that creek channel ended and we'll work our way down west and south and see what we can cover in the next video. Probably maybe two more videos for Google Earth. Then we'll switch over to the offshore hotspots and we'll talk about that. Hey, if you haven't gone out and checked out my site yet, please do simplisticfishing.com. You can pick up all these waypoints plus the offshore stuff, have it all ready to go for you to put it in your graph. Just go out there and check it out. And until next time, I hope you catch your PV. Take it easy.